Hello and welcome to this Against the Storm tutorial on Reputation and Maintenance. As I mentioned in the introductory tutorial, this series will be covering all aspects of the gameplay, all the various features and mechanics of the game. However, with this game still being in early access, some of these aspects may be altered slightly or greatly throughout the development period. When that happens, I plan to provide some kind of update, either with an updated tutorial video or, at a minimum, as a pinned comment. With that said, let's get started. I originally thought to make Reputation and Impatience two separate tutorials, but given that how the systems are linked to each other, and in fact they're intertwined as their opposites, I felt they were better here as one tutorial. Reputation is the blue bar, Impatience is the red bar. When the blue bar fills up, you win the game. When the red bar fills up, you lose the game. In the Settler difficulty, there are 12 points of reputation, symbolized by each of these little tick marks. In, in Pioneer, Veteran, and Viceroy, there are 14. I believe there are more in Prestige levels, but don't quote me on that as I'm not as familiar with the Prestige system as I am with the base part of the game. There are always 14 reputation points, or excuse me, impatience points. Reputation is gained in three different ways. The first way, the most common way, is turning in orders. In Settler, there are 12 orders. That steps down to 11 on Pioneer, and then down to 8 or 9, eventually, on uh, Viceroy. I don't believe it goes below that, though, in, in, into the Prestige, but I could be wrong on that as well. Each order turned in gives one reputation point. I've turned in one, two, three, four. So that's why I have four reputation points here. As you can see by mousing over the bar, shows that I have four reputation points. It also shows here a high resolve plus zero per minute, which we'll get to in a little bit. The impatience is at 3.2 and shows a gain of 0 0.17 per minute. We'll get to that in a moment as well. The second way to gain Impatient, or reputation points is by collecting tokens, usually from opening caches. Uh, the first type of cache, uh, small caches, I don't actually have a, one to show you, but they all basically work the same. Here we have a large abandoned cache and a medium abandoned cache. Within each cache, you have two choices. You can take some goods, or you can send those goods to the Citadel in exchange for reputation and amber. A small abandoned cache will give you 0 0.5 reputation points. A medium abandoned cache, such as this one, will give you 0 0.75. And a large abandoned cache will give you 1.0 reputation points in exchange for some tools. And you'll also get the amber. Or you can choose to keep the goods and forego the reputation gain. The second and a half way to gain reputation uh, I classify this one with the caches because it's uh, it's a little less common. In fact, you have to wait until a little bit later in the game in order to get it. And it effectively is the same kind of functionality in that you're directly trading goods for the reputation. And that's from the trader. I don't have a trader to demonstrate this with, but the trader's window, which I have a tutorial upcoming on that if you're watching these in order, has a lower area where you can buy things like perks and blueprints and, from some traders at least, reputation. The third way to gain reputation is via Resolve. Now, I haven't done the Resolve tutorial yet either, so that's forthcoming as well, or later in the series if you're watching it later. But Resolve is, is shown by this meter around the character portrait here. Uh, the green bar shows the current level of Resolve, and the blue line shows the reputation threshold of Resolve. Now I can show you here that lizards have a reputation threshold of 15 by default, beavers of 30, and humans of 30. Once the uh, Resolve meter gets to be greater than or equal to the reputation threshold, that race will start generating reputation from their Resolve. The higher it is above that line, the more reputation they generate, 
And the more people you have in that race, the more reputation they generate. So you'll have a value then shown here of high resolve of something that's greater than zero reputation per minute. When that happens, the bar will start moving on its own, just as the impatience bar moves on its own. And now on to impatience. There are several ways to gain impatience in the game. The first and most primary is time. Just by playing the game, you gain some amount of impatience per minute. This number here has been somewhat modified by the orders tree and the specific building in the orders tree that reduces the queen's impatience gain per minute. So if you're concerned about your impatience gain, that is a good place to target some of your upgrade uh, resources, your citadel resources, into that particular building's upgrades. Once the bar reaches the maximum of 14, you will lose the game. You can also mitigate that a little bit using another perk in the upgrades tree called Last Stand, where uh, per charge or per purchase of Last Stand, you, can you get an additional 30 seconds at maximum to lower the reputation before you actually lose the game. Probably the second most common source of impatience beyond time is villagers dying or leaving. By default, the queen will notice those deaths or abandonments and will penalize you impatience. There is a forest mystery that is available, one of the green ones, that during the drizzle, anybody who leaves or dies uh, is basically ignored thanks to the queen's um, passive um, disinterest in uh, in your town due to other pressing matters. So, so if you have that, then you have less to worry about with abandonments and deaths, assuming that they happen in the drizzle season. There may be other perks and cornerstones that affect in the same way as well. The third way to gain uh, impatience is via Glade events. Uh, certain Glade events will have a timed penalty. Uh, I don't remember, and I can't show you now this one, unfortunately, where if you don't solve the Glade event within a certain amount of time, you'll gain one impatience point or something along that line. So keep an eye out for those. If your impatience is already high, that will, that will could be a problem. And the fourth way is via traders. You can summon a trader immediately for the penalty of one half of an impatience point. And you can also attack the trader, which keeps traders from coming to that settlement again. And I believe it also causes impatience. I've never actually done it, so I'm not sure. But I believe it does cause impatience as well. So how do you mitigate impatience other than having the, the luck of having one of those um, one of those perks that, that you know avoids some of the impatience gain or the upgrades tree that reduces that gain number? Well, the easiest way is to gain reputation. For every full reputation point earned, impatience is dropped by one point. Now, I'd like to recommend that people keep that in mind, especially when turning in an order, as an order will give you that whole impatience point, or that whole reputation point. If your impatience is below one, you will only lose that fractional impatience point. So I'd like to recommend that you wait until you have at least one point of reputation before be, one point of impatience before turning in an order and gaining that one reputation point as you will not get the full benefit on the impatience side. Note that there's also a force mystery that warns you that you will not gain you will not decrease your impatience by turning in orders during the storm. If you have that particular forest mystery, make sure that you save your orders turn-ins for drizzle or clearance, uh, 
so that you are able to gain the full benefit of that additional reputation point and that de decrement of the impatience. On the other hand, having a high impatience is actually very beneficial because the queen's impatience causes you to have less hostility. Check out my tutorial on the hostility system, but the queen's impatience causes a reduction in hostility per point, per whole point, uh, currently accumulated. In this case, I have just over three whole points, 3.2. So I get uh, 10 times the difficulty multiplier of 1.5 times three, which is 45 points subtracted from my total hostility, which in certain cases can bring you down a level due to crossing that threshold. So while you might think that reputation impatience being low is best, in fact, until the end of the game, high impatience is actually best. Just not too high. At the end of the game, you gain uh, reputation points. It's not reputation points. You gain points with the uh, with the queen that you're used to compete with the other factions. These points, uh, one of the one of the categories of these points is how much impatience you have left. So the maximum you can accumulate here is 14 points. If you don't have any impatience at the very end of the game, you'll get the most score from that system. Whereas if it's very high, you'll get the least amount of score from that system for that particular measurement. So you kind of have to balance things a little bit in order to make sure that you optimize the game the best. That concludes this tutorial on reputation and impatience. If I have missed anything or you would like anything clarified, please reach out to me either in the comments section or come to my Discord, which you can find the link to connect to in the description below. Also, make sure you check out the rest of this tutorial series and my concurrently running Let's Play series that I treat the beginning part of as a tutorial in a Let's Play where I focus and explain everything I do so that it serves the same basic role as these tutorials. However, they're in a more practical hands-on setting, whereas these tutorials are more focused on a specific item, such as reputation and impatience. As I mentioned, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and thank you for watching. Bye for now.